Hey, welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Today, I am gonna review the Vitamix A2300 Ascent. We bought this uh, amazing, well, I think it's gonna be amazing. I've never used it. This isn't an unboxing because they get rid of the box, but full disclosure, I have not used it yet. I've done a little bit of research on it. I've read on it. It came with this beautiful hardcover, roughly 100 page book, very impressive, full of recipes and different uh, suggestions and ideas. And we're gonna try some of the recipes that they uh, suggest you do. The first thing I noticed as well at is that a lot of blenders, you've got to put them on, twist them to lock into place. This one, you don't. You just drop it and put it into place. This one here is a 11 pound machine, 64 ounce, 1.893 liters, eight cup capacity container. It's got a four foot cord, 12 amp, two and a half, 2.2 horsepower, professional grade unit with a stainless steel blade. And it's anywhere between 530 and $600 Canadian, depending on where you buy it and it comes in some different colors. So if you can want to match to your kitchen. Now, it does have a 10 year warranty, which is really exciting. However, I did read something last night, that comment on Amazon saying that somebody, I don't know who, had a problem that because they bought it on Amazon and they were shipped a US model, but they live in Canada, they had a problem with the warranty. I don't know anything about that. Uh, hopefully we don't have any warranty issues. So I got the old trusty tape measure here and it's roughly 17 and a half inches high. So if I look at my counter, that would not fit underneath my uh, countertop there. It is almost 11 inches deep and it is about eight inches wide. So as far as a um, kitchen appliance, it's pretty big. So if you don't have a lot of storage and you're hoping to store this underneath your counter or underneath your cabinets, you may want to measure first that it's going to fit under there. Now, of course, if I took this off separately and put that beside each other, of course it would fit, but it was going to, it would take that much more room on your countertop having these separately. Anyway, little point for you. So we're all about technology here in the Average Kitchen, and uh, Jamie downloaded this cool app, this decibel app on his um, Samsung phone. So we'll turn this on. <laughs> One of the first things that you get when you open up your box is this document that says start here. It talks about putting it together, finding a home for it, so on and so forth. But what it talks about is filling up the container halfway with warm water, putting in, it says here, just a drop of liquid dish soap, put it into your machine, start it on level one, and slowly ramp up to level 10, and then rinse it out, and your machine's sort of ready to go, clean, ready to go. Now, this has been washed, but I never did that step, so I wanna try that uh, right now. So I'm gonna pop this off, I'm gonna take the lid off. I'm gonna pop this off. They say fill it halfway, I'm just gonna eyeball it here. That should be good. A little drop of soap. So we're gonna start it on level one. We're gonna slowly move it up. Now I'd be curious to see if we're gonna have any spillage here. We shouldn't. little bit intimidating because that thing is moving so I'll see here that there is a little bit now mind you we're dealing with hot water and soap here but you could see Jamie I don't know if you can get in here but you can see there's a little bit of soap that came out the top I was just picturing how funny it would be if this thing would have like I don't know exploded in those soap everywhere obviously it didn't happen so now we're going to do what they suggest is take that off and give it a rinse and then we'll be good to start running this through some tests. So the first test I'm gonna do is make homemade whipped cream. So I have a couple taste samplers here ready to uh, try this out. Calls for two cups of whipped cream. I've got a cup of heavy cream here. I think is gonna be more than sufficient to see if this does uh, the job. So what it says in the book is to put your cream in and it only takes 30 to 45 seconds. It suggests starting at the highest, uh, sorry, the lowest speed and work your way up. It does not call for this, but I'm gonna put a pinch of cinnamon in it. 
just a touch, put that lid on. So we'll make sure that's locked so we don't have a mess. Let me start a timer here. <laughs> 45 seconds on my phone. Wow. Can you get high enough to see that, Jay? All right, try it out. I would say in 45 seconds, pretty impressive. Now the challenge is gonna be not ruining a spatula to get that out with that blade, although it shouldn't be too bad. But that's whipped cream. So the next thing that we're gonna try here is cream of asparagus soup. Now, when I was looking through the book, I found the advertising of, hey, the Vitamix makes soup a little deceiving. For example, there was a potato carrot soup that is in the book, but 100% of everything, or I should say 99% of everything is done on your stove, and then you just blend it in the blender. So I don't think that the Vitamix is making the soup per se. This one is kind of almost a bit of a hybrid. So we got a bunch of beautiful, beautiful asparagus here that we're gonna steam on the stove, but then we're gonna add our half and half cream, chicken broth, our asparagus, salt and pepper and everything to the blender and blend it. So is the Vitamix actually making the soup more so than the other one? But again, I think it's a little bit deceiving when uh, it says that. So there we got our asparagus that we're gonna get on the stove and get those steamed and then we're gonna make our soup. So our asparagus is steamed and has been cooled. And I think that the reason why they suggest that or what makes the most sense to me is if you put something super, super hot into this and put this sealed lid on top and blend it and it starts to obviously get even hotter, it could pop and that could be really dangerous. So they had suggested in the book that you um, bring it to room temperature roughly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a cup and a half of chicken stock or chicken broth. So I'm just gonna measure that out here. So they do suggest when I was reading the book that you start with the liquids on the bottom and then you add your um, solids on top of the liquids. In order to sort of comply with the way that they suggest that you make this, we'll do it the way they, they say. So I'm also gonna add half a cup of half and half cream. So we're gonna add that. So the only thing I can think of now though is the splash factor as we're gonna add this to see how much of a mess it's gonna make, hopefully not much. Uh, I'm gonna add in some salt and pepper. So let's throw the lid on. It says to blend it for six minutes and 30 seconds, which is pretty specific. That was a long time to listen to that. Um, in the beginning, I'm like, I don't understand why it would have to be running for six minutes and 30 seconds. But what I was noticing as it was blending for that length of time was this is almost actually now like very hot to the touch. And I suspect when we open this, you'll probably see. So to almost contradict what I had talked about earlier about this not really making the soup per se, I guess I'm kind of wrong because you should be able to so it's definitely, I mean, it would probably thicken up a little bit as it cooled down a little bit, but so that would be hot enough to eat right out of the bowl, just like that. Uh, you don't have to put it on the stove. And I suspect that is the reason why the length of time for the blending. The taste is fantastic. It's really, really good. Maybe needs a little bit more salt and pepper that can be added uh, in each in individual person's bowl. But as far as uh, soup goes, let's pour it out and let's have a look. We haven't tried pouring this yet, so we'll see. No clumps, obviously, I wouldn't suspect so with uh, six and a half minutes of blending. But there you go, cream of asparagus soup. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is make a avocado cucumber lime smoothie. So it calls for two cups of cucumber. Now I just had a large English cucumber that I chopped up. That should be pretty close. Close for half of an avocado, but as you probably know, avocado doesn't store well if you, uh, you only use half. I mean, there is ways that you could try to preserve it, but I'm just gonna put in the whole avocado. It's not a, uh, not a huge avocado, so I'm gonna put the whole thing in. So now it calls for some lime zest. So I have a fresh lime here. Uh, quick tip, if you don't know that, I always roll out uh, lime to, uh, get the juices flowing and help uh, you, you maximize your lime. So we're just gonna uh, zest a lime here. I'll try to do it in a way that you can see it better. 
and then we're going to uh, cut that lime in half and give it a good squeeze. We're going to add our ice, avocado lime cucumber ice. I think we're good to go. So we'll put our lid on the right way. It's, wor it's working through it here. So I think maybe, a, again, we're kind of rookie users of this here. Let's use this big baton that's not really doing a whole lot. Try to move some things around a little bit here. Okay, well, let's add a bit of water then. That should be about four tablespoons, and that may help loosen things up a little bit. So let's try that then. So in fairness, I was not following the instructions. All right, let's try this again. Not sure what's going on here. No, it doesn't say how to, uh, there's a specific way you're supposed to mix it. So I don't know. I would definitely say the ice is the problem for sure. So let's try that. So I took part of the mixture out, made sure the blade was turning, which it is. So we'll try it again here. Maybe the cubes are too big, I'm not sure. So, I mean, this is kind of a bit of a clump of ice, obviously, and so is this. I don't know, is there a problem with the Vitamix? So it gets to a point, I guess, that it just bogs down whenever it's too much. But I mean, it should be able to crush a whole thing of ice, no? I don't know if I would describe that as a smoothie per se. She's pretty tick. Uh, the first test of making a smoothie, not really a success. So let's get this cleaned up and uh, let's try some frozen fruit and see what happens. Okay. May have, may have changed the uh, results as a result of my kind of like, oh, I'll throw in another half an avocado and I won't even look at the book and see what order they uh, suggest that you put things in there, which Jamie brought to my attention, may be very important. So we're gonna try a, smooth, a fruit smoothie and we're gonna do it the way they suggest, not the way that Mark wants to do it. So according to the book, they say liquid first. So I, here I have one cup of vanilla, lactose free for me, yogurt. They suggest order of operations. It always makes me think of like bed mass or whatever it was called when I was in high school. Trying to learn how to do math. I still suck at math, but anyway. So there, we got a cup of yogurt. Then says your fruit. So I have one cup of frozen strawberries and one cup of frozen pineapple. And then it suggests putting your ice on top of that, which we have a cup of ice. So now we should. Okay, so full disclosure here, I'm not sure how Jamie's going to edit this, but uh, I'm self-admitted a rookie smoothie maker and a rookie high-end blender user. So we, we tried to make it a fruit smoothie and the liquid ratio to fruit ratio was a bit of a disaster and essentially it made sherbet. And the problem I have is it's not really clear in the book at all about how much water or how much milk or how much yogurt to frozen fruit versus whatever. So we're gonna try this again, and I hope it's successful. Uh, I've got a cup of water, I'm literally measured this out, a cup of water and two cups of frozen fruit. So you can see there's some strawberries there and some frozen blueberries. I hope, and again, I don't know, I hope that this is gonna be a good combination. So we'll put that in and we'll get that going as soon as we can so that it doesn't freeze. And let's see what happens here. I hope you can sort of feel my frustration here with, with this product. I mean, it blended it, but you can see it's not a smoothie. So I'm gonna add another cup of water and see maybe you have to have equal parts water or milk 
to equal parts fruit. Let's see. All right, so let's pour it out and see what it looks like. In my opinion, had Vitamix just wrote in the book, you need to have equal parts milk or equal parts water, or equal parts liquid to frozen fruit so that you don't end up with sherbet. I think that would be so helpful. And again, we've tried this so many times shooting this video, uh, mostly unsuccessful until now where I'm like literally gonna measure it out. And it, it was two cups of water to two cups of frozen fruit. And it appears that this is gonna be the ratio that's gonna be good. So now I appreciate this is frozen fruit, but it's certainly, I guess it's a smoothie, but it's, it's a frozen smoothie. Like it's not, it's not a liquid drink. There's definitely, and we didn't add any ice as you saw. So it's certainly good. Um, I didn't make it with milk cause I'm lactose. And I'm, I think I've mentioned that before, but it tastes like blueberries and strawberries. So that appears to be the magic ratio, I guess. Um, but really frustrating to try to figure out for a first time Vitamix user and for a first time smoothie operator, uh, frustrating. We are downstairs in the average kitchen bar, uh, my basement bar here, and I'm going to mix up a frozen purple rain. So I've got some cranberry juice here. Uh, we're gonna probably put in, I'll say a cup and a half, and then we're just gonna kinda eyeball this. Got blue Caraco. We'll put in two ounces of that. We got uh, raspberry sourpuss. We'll do two ounces of that. And then we've got some uh, Tito's vodka. And I know our American friends are a big fan of the Tito's. And we'll do uh, a couple ounces of that. Okay, moment of truth here. Let's throw the lid on. Let's see what happens. So I think the goal to this um, slushy drink or to any slushy drink, and again, learning process here, the goal with this is probably going to be to have some ice crystals, but for it not to be like these big chunks of ice, or maybe you want more ice. Yeah, so there's definitely some ice chunks. So another cup of ice. So you can definitely see now that it's sort of settling a bit, there's definitely a, a good amount of ice in there. Remember getting these glasses years ago, I was on a Royal Caribbean cruise and it was sort of a promo thing that they had. The taste is bang on, but I'm gonna crush that ice a little bit more. And you see how all of a sudden, Jamie, that the, uh, how it's gotten like slush. super, super thick, which actually, you know, am I gonna yard sale this? Oh, that's not too bad. Give that a try, Jamie. So I may have to sit for a little bit. Again, I think it's trial and error. Very good. All right, so let's kind of conclude and talk about what we did in these, uh, on the review of this uh, Vitamix. Whipped cream did amazing. Very impressed, was great. The soup was for me the highlight of this video. Uh, very impressed on how the soup turned out. We followed the instructions in the book to a T and it turned out perfect. Very impressed how hot the soup was, everything about it was great. Frozen drink we did downstairs in my bar, uh, I think turned out great. I think that those types of drinks are endless and whatever you like, margaritas, whatever you like, endless. The Cadbury secret of how to figure out how to make the best frozen smoothie out of frozen fruit is certainly a trial and error and certainly frustrating and to me is a huge con for this piece of equipment that you spend that much money and it comes with this beautiful book and it's very unclear how um, the best practice to make a frozen fruit smoothie. If this fruit was thawed out and uh, you took it out the night before and left it on your counter, it would be a no brainer. But does everybody wanna do that every single night before they go to bed? Take out a bunch of frozen fruit, throw it in a container and thaw it out? Probably not. That's the whole reason you're buying a five or $600 blender is it should be able to easily crush through these big frozen strawberries. The other con for me is that this is expensive. It's, it's not cheap. It was, I don't know, Jamie, what was it like with tax? Like almost $600, $585 or something. Yep. So it's super expensive. And 
Are you getting a high quality product? I think so. I welcome the viewers to give me some feedback. Maybe I'm doing something completely wrong and, and I'll own that. Uh, but for someone who's bought this for the first time, which I think a lot of people aren't like experienced smoothie people, for someone who's bought this for the first time coming out of the box and using it, <clears throat> I think it should be a little bit more user friendly than having to be a seasoned veteran to figure this out. So overall, do I think it's a good product? Yes, I do. Does it have some flaws and some challenges and some frustrations? Absolutely. That's our video. I hope you liked it. Check out some of our other videos. Leave us a comment and we'll get back to you. See you on the next one.